Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And welcome back to Talk of the Town for this Monday, June 22nd. I'm Gary Stevens. Open line following the 11 o'clock news. Deborah Rodriguez will take care of that for us from CBS. But it's time on this fourth Monday of the month to be chatting with State Representative, first-term Republican Brad Slaw of Zeeland Township, who represents Holland, Zeeland, and uh, pretty much everything west of 32nd Avenue and north of Ottigan Street and maybe south of Port Sheldon. If I can say pretty much that's the boundaries that your district has, uh, State Representative Brad Slaw, thanks once again for joining us here on Talk of the Town. It's my pleasure, and thank you for inviting me. I appreciate being back here all the time. And uh, I still like Zoom way better than just the phone call, so uh, that's good. That's fine. We certainly appreciate that. But, of course, we want to chat with Representative Brad Slaw. Let's do it the old-fashioned way, shall we? At 395-1450, 395-1450. Brad, let me uh, bring up a topic right off the bat, something that two of your colleagues were involved with last week and that is Mary Whiteford and Luke Nierman, a rally last week uh, dealing with unemployment claims. Both have been in the forefront, and from what I understand from MERS, all members of the legislature have had at least one call from a constituent having problems getting unemployment claims through the Unemployment Insurance Agency. Your experiences with that, whether or not how many constituents have had, you, you've had to deal with, Brad, and dealing with a problem that hopefully a supplemental budget uh, allocation will help in terms of maybe getting 500 people on board to help ease some of the caseload. Yeah. So we've had lots and lots of people. Right now, I think I've got close to 400 people that have contacted my office that we have not been able to clear. Um, the, all of their information and have them um, getting their social security, or I'm sorry, their unemployment dollars. So um, we've verified that we've got their information. We've helped them um, because they've filed in one way and for some reason it's rejected. So my staff and I have been continually talking to these folks um, and submitting those claims back to the unemployment agency. And we're uh, over 400 that are still unpaid. Um, some of them for what 14 16 weeks now that they've gone without a paycheck um, it's it's a disaster for some of those people not just a disaster for the people but really for the system itself and some of the way things have been handled and, and that's really what's rubbing a lot of lawmakers the wrong way is that this could have been you know obviously the onslaught of uh, claims because of COVID-19 was something nobody could have expected but Correct. the response after that is something that could have been uh, dealt with far better than what we are seeing right now. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, my team continues to send it, those in for me. And um, one of the interesting things is if, if we send something, if you and I talk, are communicating, even by um, a messenger or um, Skype or whatever, however we're communicating, we typically if you get something from me, you respond back and say, I got it or a thumbs up or any kind of idea that, that you've actually received it. Not once have we had that from the unemployment agency. Um, they, they just don't respond. They just, just, they leave us to assume that they got it, but that doesn't always happen. Electronic technology doesn't always work. Um, and so we've just struggled with that. And we feel, you know, the legislators, um, Mary Whiteford, myself, Luke Mirman, we really feel that um, we're not doing our, our constituents a lot of service in the way that we're handling a bunch of this stuff. So that's really the, been the rub for us is there are constituents, they're the constituents of the unemployment agency, but they're not really being treated with that kind of care that we'd want our people to be treated. If you got a question for State Representative Brad Slaw, he'll take it at 395-1450, 395-1450. What about Secretary of State? We're getting some calls now about people not getting responses from the Secretary of State's office. What about the SOS and uh, uh, dealing with some of their issues? You know, it's been interesting. We've, uh, you know, the Secretary of State has decided that they that we were going to send out these absentee ballot um, 
just sign up cards uh, to everybody in the entire state. You know, I, not everybody wants that kind of thing. We're, we're just struggling with how that's working. Um, and we're, you know, we've had Secretary of State offices closed for the entire time of this pandemic. Um, and finally just gonna start opening up and, and there are huge backlogs and people haven't been able to move vehicles. Yeah, that's just, it's been, uh, to me, it's, it's really a disservice to the citizens um, as we try and do our work. So it's been a tough thing. Yeah, it's a, you know, some people are, you know, saying, you know, it, it's nice to have this uh, amnesty from uh, renewing the licenses or getting the registration tabs, but that's still, you know, you still want to be able to do the right thing and you're not able to. And when you try to, you know, you're running into roadblocks and, and long lines and, and, and phone calls that you wait for an hour, two hours, three hours, and all of a sudden, click, there yeah, you go. Exactly. Yeah. If you got a question for Brad Slaw, he'll take it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of this, they say, the meat and potatoes of uh, uh, legislative business right now. And that is, and that's right up your alley, because as former Ottawa County Treasurer, you are well aware of budgets. You know, it's not going to be on the governor's desk by the end of that, by next, by next Tuesday, but yet, you know, you guys, you guys, and I'm seeing collectively lawmakers need to put something before the governor pretty soon, I would think. Yeah, you know, it's, Gary, it's been an interesting thing. Uh, as a part of the Appropriations Committee, we've, um, we have some ideas about plans that we can put in place for budget. Um, the process in the state of Michigan is that the governor is supposed to provide us knowledge that there is, through the Treasury Department, um, that there is a budget deficit and that we're going to relook at our budget and the governor should be giving us an initial budget that says, here's what I think we ought to do with the funding that we're gonna have. So knowing that there's a $3 billion shortfall, where is it gonna come from? How are we gonna do that? Um, at this point in time, we've seen nothing from the governor. And uh, so we've talked with the Treasury Department um, and they're saying that j the July 1st date that we were supposed to have a budget in place is uh, not necessarily going to be, we're not going to be held to that this year, but that's a problem. We've created a law and we now aren't going to live into the law and that just creates a little consternation for some of us um, that, are, that are lawmakers. We're like, okay, well, if we're making them, shouldn't we be living into it, uh, first of all? And then we do have this big hole. How are we going to make that happen? And scarily you know there there's a big hole for schools and they're really already finishing their budgets and starting um, on their next year not only their the actual budget budget but that the utilization of that is is wrapping up so how do we do that if you got a question for brad slaw he'll take it at 395-1450 good morning you're on the line with the state representative hi um so I'm having issues as well with my unemployment. I was approved for PUA, and it put that claim in an old unemployment portal, which that employer no longer exists. Um, but it never asked me for my new employer, which I've worked for for over six years. Um, it will not let me certify, and I have called thousands of times. I've been hung up on multiple times. I have tried a live chat. I have sent messages. I have sent text replies. Um, and I don't know if I did something wrong, but I've just not gotten any kind of a response. And I've emailed my state representative. And again, they're saying somebody's going to call me, but I have not heard a thing. So it's kind of crazy. Question is, um, without due, uh, all due respect, is Brad your representative or is somebody else? Um, I emailed uh, Mary Whitford. Okay, so it's down in Allegan County. It, the, it, it is in Allegan County. Okay, I just want to make sure we're clarifying that. Brad? Yeah, so um, if you haven't heard back from Mary or her staff, um, I would contact her again. Um, very, I mean, today, I would make sure that you're connecting with her. Um, she has been, I know that she's been working really hard at trying to get those in. And so if you haven't heard from her or her staff, then you, we need to, we need to try and get that in again. If you have heard from her, then it's in process. Um, but they're, they're now saying to us that it could be 30 days before we hear anything for those people that we're turning in information, um, at this point in time. So, 
um, they're not giving us any guarantees and they're saying it, it could be 30 days or even longer before we hear back. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just be patient. Um, yeah, it's been, I was supposed to certify already at the beginning of May. And so now it's been two months that I've been trying to get through to somebody and I just can't. And their office right. did reply to me. So. Oh, oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Appreciate the call. Thank you. 395-1450, 395-1450. By the way, uh, just for information purposes, Mary's, ad, Mary's phone number is 517-373-0836, 517-373-0836. And of course, Brad's number, and as soon as I get the I'm trying to do about three things at once here, and I apologize for that. Uh, Brad's office number, and by the way, we'll put a link to Brad's page when we put the podcast of this conversation on our website at whtc.com a little bit later on. Brad's number is 517-373-0830. That's 517-373-0837-30, I should say, for uh, the number for uh, Brad's Law's office. So, Hopefully that will help as well. But again, trying to you know deal with, I hate to say this, but bureaucrats that frankly, Brad, they're not answerable to the people because they are, you know, uh, they're not, you know, the, the leaders are not elected. They get appointed. And the way the state bureaucracy is, there's no limits on that. Um, yes, they can make independent decisions without being pressured by political wins. But when situations like this happen, when they need to be held accountable, they're not being held accountable. Correct. It, and I, I think you're exactly right, Gary. There's um, with no term limits, no um, end dates. Um, people just feel like, hey, and, and it's really tough to try and um, actually bring some sort of case that says you're not actually doing your job. That, that's it's really hard to do um, in this in, in the environment in Lansing. And so there's no, nobody really fears for keeping their job. Yeah, and but on the positive side, we're hoping yeah. to hire some people to, uh, you know, we've got dollars out there allocated to be able to bring people on board into the unemployment agency and actually get people hopefully trained and up to speed and moving. Um, and it's a temporary thing, it's not permanent um, because we really have this, this big number right now, especially because of, of all the stuff that's happened with this COVID process. One more question about the budget, and then we do need to take one break, Brad. Yeah. Um, obviously, what we're seeing from the governor and from her staff and, and from the budget director is the state cannot get out of this budget hole without help from Washington. There are those who say, well, we got to suck it up and try to do it ourselves. There are others who are saying, we can't do it without the help from Washington. Being a Republican, I would think you're probably in one camp, but yet can Michigan go and, and make some tough decisions to be able to balance the budget without having to rely on a bailout from Washington? The answer is we've already gotten part of that bailout from Washington, right? The CARES Act brought $3.8 billion into the state of Michigan um, back in April. And uh, we had given the governor permission to use those dollars any way that she really felt we needed to and cross that time frame and I, I think it was a 90 day window that 90 day window closes I think in the end of next week end of this week sometime shortly um, and with that so with that we've uh, recently just put through a supplemental bill that went through it's 8.8 .8 million dollars I'm, I'm sorry 880 million dollars um, of that 3.1 billion dollars that's left over uh, and it's designed to go into education and into local units of government and a bunch of things, um, and even uh, into the workforce, both farm work and um, so agricultural and those kinds of things. So we've, we and food processing is a, a big deal out of that whole thing. So how do we do those things that we've already experienced problems with COVID and uh, now need to, to ramp back up? So part of that money is being used. Um, we need to figure out how the rest of it's going to be used and where. And then once we get past that, then if we really need to ask Washington for more money, then I think it's legit. But until we've used up those dollars, I, I think we should be asking simply for how do we make use of those dollars as well as we can. 
uh, do need to ask you a political question. We're starting to see the Brad's Law for uh, state representative signs are out. Uh, we got a Zoom connection. And you're wearing one of your campaign shirts as we speak. But normally, state lawmakers would have the opportunity in the month of July and maybe in August to do some campaigning district work as well. Because of the COVID-19 situation, has that been pretty much put on the back burner, Brad, or will you still be able to be in the district a little bit more often over the next few weeks? Well, we'll definitely be in the district more often. Um, the goal would be how do, how do you do reach people without having to go to every door? Um, I, but I think we will try, still try and do some doors in some of the locations. Um, I think as I have asked folks who are out doing doors in certain ways, like the Realtors Association, I had a chance to chat with them not very long ago. And they said, you know, about half the people would welcome somebody to come to their door today. And half the people would be like, you know, I really don't want you at my door. So you have to kind of pick and choose areas to look at um, opportunities to be able to knock on some doors. And maybe some of it's just simply bringing literature to people rather than actually knocking on their door and asking them to come um, talk to you. But we intend to be out and available and doing some of that kind of thing um, over the next couple of weeks. I'm also looking at how do you use maybe some of the social media things in a different way than I've ever used them before. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be testing the waters with a couple of things related to that over the next few weeks. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering about not just the normal campaigning, but also right. some of the sessions. Normally, the, the house isn't as busy in the months of July and August as they are uh, earlier this year, but it looks like you guys might have to do some extra work this, this time around. We've already put some extra session days in the calendar for July and August. I expect there probably to be more. You're Three. exactly right. 395-1450-395-1450. If you have a question for State Representative Bradslaw, we'll be able to take maybe one more question before the break. Um, one of the interesting things Gary, yeah. that I, I can just share with you is I think this week, um, there's going to be some real effort by the, the folks in the House and the Senate to bring forward a plan um, to, that deals with our education and the, the dollars. You know, we estimate that our education student aid fund is going to be short about a billion, maybe a billion two um, for funding for this year and then that same kind of number for next year. So we're looking at can we use some of the CARES dollars that we've already received um, and put together a plan, put it out there get some dollars to the schools to make sure that they're not suffering in this process because we've got new means of education that we're having to look at. Can we use um, online education, virtual education that we've not uh, really allowed before this pandemic happened? So uh, we've got a whole bunch of ideas coming. I think uh, it'll be in the next week or so that some of that stuff will be breaking. It'll be interesting to see what we've got. And certainly uh, the governor and others don't want to hold education harmless for any budget situations for this year. But, you know, then let's put it this way, for 21-22, may not be uh, holding harmless there. Right, exactly. And with that, Brad, we're going to button up this edition of the WHTC Talk of the Town program this segment and visit with you as you join us pretty much on a regular basis, fourth Monday of the month. We appreciate you joining us today by the Zoom connection. Look forward to uh, chatting with you again next month at the uh, um, fourth month, and hopefully it'll be in person uh, here good. on WHTC. I would, I would appreciate that, Gary, and I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's State Representative Brad Slob on the WHTC Talk of the Town program. Coming up it is uh, Deborah Rodriguez with CBS News, followed by Peg McNichol with WHTC News. Hey, we got some open line to uh, talk about a few things as well before the WHTC Midday Report at the bottom of the hour on Real News Now, 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. 